I'm Jay-Z. I rap about machine learning. I'm a product manager in finance, and I used to be a UX lead in marketing SaaS and a cool hunter for advertising agencies in New York, but now I'm based in Virginia. I went to Stanford where I studied anthropology, and I'm from Shanghai, China. Today I'm going to talk to you about the Capital One Machine Learning Business Model Canvas. It's a long one. I think everyone in finance is obsessed with artificial intelligence and machine learning. I know at Capital One, everyone in our company of 50,000 employees heard from our CEO that he's obsessed with machine learning. Now everyone wants to do it. Have you ever daydreamed? It would be so cool if our system could just insert magical artificial intelligence AI, machine learning, ML solution here. So is it even possible? Because for a lot of the systems that you want to design, you don't need to design a complex ML system. And for a lot of things that you want to do with natural language processing, it's just not possible. So maybe you're really excited and you don't have enough of the questions answered and you go to your data scientist. And you wonder, why did they just roll his eyes when I proposed my idea? This happens a lot, right? Yeah. So as data scientists, they're in this box. They're interested in understanding what's technically feasible, what's academically innovative, what's plausible as a solution. As business analysts, they're interested in value. Is this going to be profitable? And then as product managers, you're in the middle, coordinating it all, but answering, is this valuable for the customer? And so because of that structure, we're trying to speak different languages. It's good to have a common one as well, which is why I rap. So I'm going to wrap this, and you can follow along. I'm not a good rapper, but I uh, encourage battles. So, if you got machine learning problems, I feel bad for you, son. I got 99 problems, but ML ain't one. Biz product data scientists from Capital One creating the ML biz model canvas, all is one. So the Capital One machine learning business model canvas, long title, you'll see in the first row, this is what you already do day to day as a product manager. This is what the Lean Product Canvas already offers you. First quadrant is about the problem. Is there a problem? Second quadrant is there value, right? That's what the business analyst is interested in. So what Capital One has uniquely contributed to the machine learning field is the bottom row in the canvas. Step three, evaluate the data. Step four, envision the output. So I'm going to go through all of this. We've also traveled nationally to hold a much more in-depth day-long workshop. But today, for the product school, we're just going to give you the top four secrets. By the end of this talk, you're going to speed up the process of going from your daydream, insert magic here, all the way to launch. Hopefully, you'll learn what you need to know to be successful. Weird. So for the first quadrant, assessing the problem suitability for AI ML. <laughs> first secret, is your problem truly well-defined and complex? So I'm going to tell you about a problem that I worked on, which is a really hard problem. A, is the challenge clearly defined? So we wanted to get to this top green sticky note. Can anyone read it for me? Thank you. I really appreciate it. So we get a lot of phone calls, and the data set is so big, there's no way any human, even supervisors of supervisors of supervisors of 6,000 call agents, could ever analyze or digest so much big data. So the, ca the challenge was clearly defined. Can it be done by hand? We really prefer to do things by hand. It's very cheap. 
and the Security and Exchange Commission really likes it when we can explain why we gave you a credit card and you a better credit card, and all of you credit cards, or none of you credit cards, right? So in terms of fairness and explainability, the law says that we have to tell them a very simple equation of what happened and why. In this case, when we look at analyzing our phone calls, we cannot create a simple equation. It needs to be a really complex natural language processing machine learning model. And it's much more expensive. So C, is this a complex problem? We spoke at the Voice <coughs> Summit last year, and we talked about NLP. It's really complex because there's what customers are saying, there's what they actually mean, there's a smaller subset of what our phone agents can actually do, and then there's the risk associated of how many millions of dollars or lawsuits we might get based on what we don't do. And so all of those things are really hard to decipher. Is the target goal clear or deep? So the target goal wasn't really clear because we wanted to group what the customers were saying, group them, the calls that they were saying it in, into insightful categories. It's nearly impossible to group them into insightful categories. And I'll show you why in a minute, but I would definitely recommend when you start your first machine learning project, like right after you know this talk, I definitely recommend something that has less than like 10 shades of ambiguity. So we work on a auto finance we're looking for how much we should give you a loan for a red used Subaru. It's really easy, 10 shades of ambiguity or less, to say this is a red car, this is a red Subaru, this is a red toy Subaru, this is a pink car, this is not a Subaru, this is a Chevy. We've got like 10 shades of gray, right? 10 shades of red, actually, in this situation. So I highly recommend you start with just those 10 shades because in natural language processing, you've got like thousands of shades. And in this room, if we talked about what we just talked about, you would have zillions, like infinite millions of interpretations because the human mind is subject to interpretation. All right, quantifying the value to the enterprise. So <clears throat> startups, maybe you have some VC capital burn. At a large enterprise, especially at a bank, you want to make millions of dollars like every day. So, we're going to wrap about that. <clears throat> I have allergies, so. <coughs> All right. If you got net present value problems, I feel bad for you, son. I got 99 problems, but NPV ain't one. Millions in net present value, increasing stockholder value. <coughs> When machines do boring tasks, they send peeps a life raft. Secret two, which you all know from the Lean Product Canvas, make a map of all the stakeholders who will benefit. So obviously at the top, your team will get promoted, maybe. Then the second sticky is for a horizontal platform team, maybe a black backend team that you also work with. The middle sticky, let's say, is for the user who should get a lot of benefit. Then there's the partners that you work with internally and externally, maybe a servicing or a customer service center that you hire internationally. Could be other partners like other companies that you co-brand affiliate marketing with. And then there's the fraud team. So all of these people have value that you can generate or take away from them. So let's say for your team, you estimate a certain number. It's really good to add the other numbers together so you show for the whole company what you're saving or what you're making. And especially when in finance you work with the fraud team, a little error in the algorithm, in the model, there are no algorithms, in the model, or a little change can cost you millions of dollars. And so if you don't talk to the fraud team before you launch, you are going to fail. And as a product manager, your only value is your relationship with all of these stakeholders. So remember, your stakeholder alignment works even harder for you in machine learning. 
Now we're getting to the meat of the canvas, which is the bottom row, three and four. Three is evaluating the data, and four is envisioning the output. Oh, right, we've got another wrap. If you got data training problems, I feel bad for you, son. I got 99 problems, but data training ain't one. Frogs versus princes, zeros versus ones, and this is from Tinder, right? I got trained data, you got none. So you were talking about supervised learning. Is there a labeled data that can train the system? So on Tinder, you spend a lot of carpal tunnel cycles, right? Like swiping left and swiping right to train their system. You might not know it because you're just trying to get results for yourself, but you're telling them what photos are desirable and what photos are not desirable. And maybe you do, I don't know, how many swipes? To, you're making a dating app. How many swipes do people do a day? Okay, let's say 100 a day. <laughs> and you're dating, this is New York, you're dating for like 10 years, it's a lot of data. But imagine that you need a million rows of data to start a machine learning model, right? So category one is why didn't you accept my Uber payment? Category two is did I pay my bill? And category three, let's say, is other. And so the machine has been trained to slot category one with call one, category two with calls like call two, and category three with calls like call five. And then the question is, where's call 11? Is there a call 11? <coughs> so call 11, like you said, is about all those topics. It's a long conversation, maybe lasting over half an hour. <clears throat> it's being transferred from different call agents in different countries all for the same user, but because of that complexity, cat call 11 does not score highly on any of these categories, and it's missing. And call 11, perhaps, is from a fraud ring, a fake person committing first party or third party fraud, taking down the system for a minute and causing us a lot of, like millions of dollars in losses. And so it takes a human to put call 11 somewhere, right? And then if you're the human who has to do that a million times, you're not a product manager anymore. So <clears throat> the Harvard Business Review has identified four new job families related to machine learning. One of them is training data. Another one of them is validating data. And so you want to answer in your company, who's going to do that? If you want to build a team to do that, great. We probably will contract with you. But if you don't have a team to do that, and you can't contract Mechanical Turk to do that for you, how are you gonna get like these 100 people to train the data set for a million rows of data? Like who's gonna do it? And I promise you no one in your company has the time to do it right now. So think about who you're gonna get to do it. All right, so we're getting really close. Box four, envisioning the output and define the success. So when I worked on geolocation, I launched an app that said if you're at the product school and the product school has a coupon for 10% off classes, then we would send you a push notification. The error rate there depends on whether or not you're really at the product school. So maybe we'll have a 50% threshold on location accuracy based on GPS, cellular, Wi-Fi. And then we'll have another accuracy based on whether or not the product school actually has a coupon that day that's valid. Maybe we'll put that threshold at 75% accuracy. Put that all together, send you a notification, you're a target, and the product school doesn't have a coupon, and you're like, what, what, you know? And so you delete the app, we might lose some money or some acquisition cost. But nothing fatal is gonna happen. But if you're a self-driving car company, and you make a mistake with that 50% location accuracy, then something fatal has happened, right? In Arizona and all of these test states, fatal things have happened. So what would be the impact of errors? You can define from a threshold of you know, positive, false positives and false negatives what the dollar value you want to assign to all those things are. And 
I recommend launching with a very conservative threshold. And then gradually, as you see a lot of data and a lot of results, opening up the threshold and like decreasing the accuracy as needed. So we'll go back to the same example that now you're familiar with. Let's say we changed and we created new categories, right? There are 50 categories and you, sir, with the magical AI dream, have told us, have trained the data to say that category one is about identity, identification, authentication. Category two is about payments. Category three is everything other. So let's say the, uh, the call about someone trying to change their address lands in category three for some reason, right? So, but this call actually belongs in identity. And if that caller was really important, like Ivanka Trump, and she tweets about it, there's a value associated with the negative PR that she brings. And so should the address change have been <coughs> removed from other and put into category one identity. That's something that you and your billions of <laughs> training um, team members will have to decide. Because maybe address change isn't really important except when Ivanka does it. But if address change becomes really important, you have to move it to the better category. So as you fill out the canvas, you have these four secrets, right? And you can start filling out the answers. But what happens when you start scoping projects is that you get tons more questions. And so each box could be like 10 questions. And if you take those 10 questions to your data scientist, maybe they'll say, huh, they might know their stuff. I'm kind of impressed. Right? And then your, your, your dream, which is my dream of this magical AI system, gets a one. And there's Smirkosaurus, like they don't know what they're talking about, because probably people don't know what they're talking about, gets a zero. And that's what I'm just trying to get you to. That all these questions are really, really excellent. And now you're like ready. You've got the canvas. All right, so hopefully we've sped you through the process of going from your daydream to launch. You need to know, I mean, you know what you need to be successful. The canvas is on Medium on our Capital One blog, and we're always hiring biz product data scientists nationally. If you are an amazing data scientist, you can work from home remotely anywhere, and I can refer you as well.